Hello and welcome. This is Rufalmonger, my friends. We had quite a bit of Mortal Kombat news drop, and uh, not the least of which here is we now know the full totality of the first combat pack for Mortal Kombat 1. We have Omni Man from Invincible, Ermac, the Peacemaker, and yes, that is indeed John Cena's likeness, Quan Chi. Takeda Takahashi, and yes, as we've known for a while, yes indeed, the final character here is the Homelander from the comic and TV series, The Boys. So before we get to the other very big trailer with all the reveals within, let's talk about the DLC for a split second here. So considering the fact that it's certainly John Cena's likeness for Peacemaker, I certainly hope that Omni-Man is voiced by J.K. Simmons as he's what brought the character to life in a very big way in the Invincible animated series. J.K. Simmons does do video game voice acting. He's in Baldur's Gate 3, the upcoming game, for example. So if they can get him to voice act Omni-Man, that would be fantastic. Now, Ermac! I admittedly don't love this look. Uh, but if you do, more power to you. Peacemaker, very clearly John Cena. So hopefully there's some John Cena-isms in the moveset. Like say a you can't see me level of invincibility or an attitude adjustment command grab. Quan Chi's Quan Chi. He's going to be annoying nonsense like you would expect, I'm very certain. And you know what? Same for Takeda. Takeda fans, you're not getting off easy here. Now the trailer, uh, given this isn't a full on up close look at the model, I think this is the likeness of Anthony Starr. It certainly looks a lot like him. Although I can't say for certain if it's like 100% a face model or a similarity. Just overall, I do like this combat pack. I think it's a solid mix of uh, strong guest characters and fan favorites. Now, next up, the main event for the trailers, we have the Umgadi trailer, which reveals Lee Mei, Baraka, and Tanya. So first we have a look at the new and improved outworld, much more colorful under Liu Kang's new era. We can see here what is passing for a royal procession, made extra formal because we have a guest here. As your friend and mine, Goro, is drumming and leading the procession here. A big drummer boy instead of a little one. Now, Lee Mei is revealed and returning to Mortal Kombat. She hasn't been playable in any of the modern era games since Mortal Kombat 9 and up, so it's a big return. And from the 3D era of games, she's one of the more popular characters from that time. So as you can see here, not afraid to kick some butt, and I do have some story details for you about her. So Li Mei is the first constable of the Sun Do. As her parents' firstborn daughter, Li Mei was claimed by the Umgadi, the warrior priestesses who guard the Outworld's royal family. Li Mei's service began with high expectations. Her early success caught the eye of the royal family, but it all fell apart when a terrible tragedy unfolded. Li Mei was blamed for this, and in the aftermath, she did the unthinkable. She quit the Umgadi. Friendless and alone, Li Mei needed a new purpose. She joined the Sundo's constables, the Outworld's capital's rough and tumble police force. Over time, she became their first constable. Li Mei is glad to be the capital guardian. Still, she hopes one day to redeem herself. Now, what did she do to warrant this awful thing that she had to leave the organization over? I don't know, but she's being awful sassy to Raiden, and I don't like that, so that's strike one right there. Raiden is a good boy. Now we see some snippets of her gameplay. Now, once again, she has not been in the modern era of NRS games, so basically a lot of this is, well, all new. She does call in the classic Sub-Zero cameo here, and it's a giant freeze aura, which causes the freeze capture state, so that's probably gonna be a pretty handy cameo, to say the least. Lee Mei very color-coded, but pink outfit, pink energy, I feel that's almost like sort of encroaching on Melina's territory. Now for what I'm assuming is her back throw, very elaborate, big kick over, and then summoning a pink lion spirit to bite at the character. Now moving forward in the trailer, we have a reappearing Tanya. So Tanya hasn't been around since Mortal Kombat X. She's been redesigned a little bit and not the least which gameplay wise as she uses an all new weapon, which is effectively like a trisectional staff. And just like Lee Mei, I do have some Tanya story bits for you. But before that, by the way, hey, hello, Chameleon. I got a press release after the trailer launched stating that Chameleon will be one of the DLC cameo characters in the combat pack. And that looks like that fits the build for Chameleon to me. 
Chosen as an infant from Outworld's firstborn daughters, Tanya was raised by the Umgadi priestesses. She's never known her birth family. As she grew older and saw other initiates wash out, Tanya feared that she might share their fate. But that fear spurred success. After many attempts, Tanya passed her trials and became a full Umgadi. Over time, Tanya became one of the Order's most trusted members. She was the obvious choice when it needed to be to choose a new leader for the royal family's personal guard. As an Umgadi, Tanya is sworn to piety and chastity. That's why her bond with Princess Melina, were it known, would cause a scandal. By following her heart, Tanya risked not only her position, but also her life. So basically the MKX through line of Tanya and Melina being a thing will continue into Liu Kang's new era. I guess he liked that storyline enough for it to continue. Now for Tanya's gameplay, as you can see here, she uses a big sectional staff now, which is a pretty big departure from the usual Tonfas or even say like the spear, which was one of her variations in MKX. Now you can see Li Mei has more pink lion dragons, but let's rewind for a second here because you might notice uh, Tanya's sort of glowing now. So you can see here, right before she gets blasted in the face by this projectile, uh, she sort of takes up a stance, holds her staff, and her eyes glow, and she has a little bit of an aura around her body. So this is either some sort of install or just general purpose buff, but either way, you gotta assume when someone's glowing, they're stronger than they were before they weren't glowing. You can see that she retains her classic leg drill, meterless launcher, MK1 seems to have a lot of those, into a just wild air combo, not the least of which is she becomes like a living helicopter kicking you all the way down. Now here, it's not exactly Tonfa Toss, but it does have you shooting out a projectile and it returning and it hitting you on the other end, and also with a follow-up. So a little bit of Kobujutsu Tanya perhaps lives on in Mortal Kombat 1, at least as far as the aesthetics appear here. And as for the staff, it seems to have a good amount of range, which is always welcome. And they can get pretty creative with it, as shown by this row here, with the staff kind of raining down from the heavens like a lightning strike. Now, in this section we saw a moment ago here, Tanya is concerned for Melina. And why is that? Well, because Melina has the deadly Tarkat disease, which turns her into the Melina that we all know and love. We can see here, leading into another cutscene, for whatever reason, Kenshi is, and I'm what I'm assuming is Outworld, and trying to care for Melina and whatever she's going through. And simply enough, as you can see by, say, the dramatic eye change and perhaps a nasty set of teeth, Melina's going through a lot right now. But how about the originator of Tarkat and Tarkatins? That's right, your boy Baraka is returning in Mortal Kombat 1. Mortal Kombat's favorite jobber, sorry Reptile, Baraka is back. And for my money, this is the best he has ever looked. I love the detail on this character. Like he even has like asymmetrical bone spurs on his chest now, kind of hinting at this is indeed like a disease. This is not natural design. And like the other two characters, I do have some story bits for you. So Baraka was once a respected outworld merchant, but that life ended in an instant when he contracted the dreaded Tarkat plague. Incurable, contagious, and the cause of severe physical deformities, Tarkat turned Baraka into a monster. He was cast out and doomed out to live his days in a colony of similarly afflicted outworlders. When Baraka first arrived, the colony was in disarray. His fellow Tarkatans had given up and were ready to die. Their hopelessness lit a fire in Baraka's heart. He spares no effort to better his fellow Tarkatans' lives. He knows that as long as he fights, he will never truly be a victim. So basically, being a Tarkat in Mortal Kombat 1 sucks extra bad. Thanks, Liu Kang. Now, the gameplay is fantastic. Not only does he animate this really well, just very viciously, even just little details like this. The beginning move that you see here. So, Baraka does like a little pogo hop with his blades, and then hits Li Mei and causes a bounce. Cool, right? That's fine, right? But look at the aesthetics here. When he makes that initial leap, there's a big spurt of blood coming out from his arms. Basically using the Tarkatan blades hurts him to use it, like it actually cuts himself open. So kind of like old school Wolverine logic. The blades are as deadly to him as they are to you. And of course in classic Baraka fashion, he's just an absolute berserker with the arm blades, just wildly swinging for the fences. Which, if you're a Baraka fan, is, I would think, exactly what you want. He looks very vicious, very primal, very savage, and I'm a big fan of that. 
And now let's look at this silly combo here. So basic string, you would assume, and you can tell this is an enhanced special, this Blade Flurry, which ground bounces the enemy. And then, obviously enough, get a combo follow-up, like, probably like stand four. Uh, maybe that's a special, not too sure. And this has to be like something like Blade Flurry and just keeps going after the fact. This is 15 actual hits this entire combo. It's wild. And hey, speaking of wild for a second. So Lee Mei, string, EX Fireball, bounces, about what you expect, get to keep comboing, right? That's cool. And this big rocket knee, which carries Baraka along, that's really cool. Now this though, this is some nonsense right here. So after the special, Lee Mei calls the Goro cameo going for the classic Goro Shokan stomp, right? And definitely looks like it's unblockable. Why? Because Baraka blocks the fireball and he still gets crushed by the stomp. So this is an unblockable cameo attack, just like Jax would have, except there's definitely seemingly some actual real setups for it. After the special moves over, after the call, quick fireball for the lockdown, force you to block or neutral duck, and then you get stomped by Goro. So yes, in case you were somehow wondering, there will absolutely be a lot of set play and gimmicks with the cameos, because this looks rotten. This looks greasy. I would be mad if I got hit by this, and yet I would laugh if I hit it on someone else. That's the dichotomy of fighting games. Now, speaking of some silly stuff, we move onwards to Tanya. And Tanya, remember how her eyes were glowing earlier in the trailer? We're going to see that again. And it looks like a parry slash armored move. So you can see Tanya in this, I'm assuming a bit of a stance, eyes are glowing and has all sorts of arms around her, like kind of like a divine protection, if you will. And after getting the hit in and blocking the hit, she goes for her classic style of teleport and bonks Baraka on the other side of the head. Also, by the way, Baraka, when he's charging in, he's bleeding just uh, before the hit again, once again, showing the Tarkatan blades kind of suck. So full details remain to be seen, but Tanya definitely has some sort of power up slash buff slash ability here, and it looks really cool. And speaking of cool, the master of cool, the king of cool, Darius is uh, returning as a cameo character. Yes, your boy Darius is back. If anyone fits the bill for a cameo, Darius is absolutely it because he doesn't even have like the meme potential of Su Hao. So yeah, welcome back Darius. And now Tony does a drill, gets punished. And I just want to point out again, the absolute savagery of this animation here. So he's just punching you on the way up and then stabbing you in the gut and just body slamming you down. I love the viciousness of Baraka in this game. Add that in with some genuine fantastic nonsense like this air blade pinwheel. I think I like Baraka now. And then we also see part of Tanya's fatal blow here. So launching up and once again with this gold kind of spiritual motif hitting with the big punches before crashing down and forcing the enemy into the staff, which, you know, doesn't work out so good for them. And now just one last shot here of Lee Mei, just reaffirming her belief in the Umgadi and Edenia slash Outworld, whatever it is now in general. And we get one little cut at her fatal blow as well. So the pink energy and the spirit, lion, dragon, tigers, whatever it is, I, I'm not sure, but it looks cool. It looks cool. So it doesn't need to be anything. It looks cool, right? Snaps the enemy neck before throwing him into the giant gaping maw. So I dig it. I like her new aesthetic she's working with. And at the end of the trailer, there's some fatalities, which I'm not going to show you because you know how it is on YouTube. I'm sorry. You can check those out on the official MK page if you'd like. But overall, very impressive trailer. Lee Mei, I've never personally been a fan, but I do think she looks well done in this version. Tanya, I am a fan, and I'm very interested in uh, how the trisectional staff will work, and also her weird, seemingly like almost divine biggest powers. Uh, I really like how all that works. And Baraka, man, like Baraka is Baraka. Like all you could say is Baraka's one step ahead of Reptile on the totem pole, right? And he looks fantastic in this revision of the game. I'm shocked. You could never confuse me for being a Baraka guy, but after seeing this man, I gotta say he's legitimately on the radar now. The viciousness and savagery of just everything he's doing, it's like the best it's ever been, and I am absolutely here for it. Now, besides all this, there were some other little small things at the San Diego Comic-Con. One thing was a special trailer only shown for the people at Comic-Con, but we do have one still image for you. And that which is indubitably Reiko and Motaro. So it looks like Reiko will be a playable character. Motaro, 
I'm gonna assume cameo, unless they figured out how to make a centaur playable in a fighting game, and if so, more power to them. But both very interesting additions to say the least. Also, Ed Boon on record on the panel, same things like, you know, animalities, babalities, some classic things. There might be some alities that haven't been around in a while that might make a return in Mortal Kombat 1, so that'll be very fun. Also, promising a very expansive single player component to the game, although no details on that just yet. We'll have to wait and see on that in the future. In the end, just like the Lin Kuei trailer that dropped a little bit ago here, I think this is a very strong trailer. It shows off some great personality of some of the characters. The gameplay, I think, is great, especially on the Baraka end, and just makes me excited to see more Mortal Kombat 1. So mission accomplished. And well, other than that, I guess we're at the end of the video. So of course, naturally, when there's more Mortal Kombat info, I'll be doing my best to cover everything on this channel. But until then, thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well, and go out and play some Mortal Kombat.